thanks to his dynamic range, flashy kicks, jaw-dropping athleticism, and slick submission grappling, Yair Rodriguez is the UFC featherweight division's most electrifying fighter, who has had numerous ups and downs in his career. But now that he is entering his prime, Yair wants to make the most of it by proving that he's the best 145-pound fighter in the world. And there's no better way of achieving that feat than in the presence of Max Holloway and Alex Volkanovsky. Welcome to the MMA sector, where today we'll dive deeper into the epic rise of El Pantera. Born and raised in Paral, Chihuahua, Mexico, Rodriguez had a knack for fighting from an early age. As a child, Rodriguez was very hyperactive, a trait that ultimately led him to a career in combat sports. Yair discovered mixed martial arts at a very young age, when he happened to watch a few pride fights with his cousins. The kids would then have unsanctioned patio fights to find out who was Fedor Emelianenko or Vanderlei Silva among them. Rodriguez wasn't always the victor, but he was the most determined of them all, and eventually he signed up for Taekwondo at five years old. The rest, as we all know, is history. At only 18 years old, Rodriguez made a successful start to his mixed martial arts career in 2011, when he defeated Jonathan Guzman by unanimous decision at Mexican Fighter Promotions 8. In his next two fights, Rodriguez scored back-to-back -back submission victories to showcase his diverse skill set. In his fourth fight, he suffered his first professional loss, but he bounced back in style, knocking out Edgar Juarez with a flying knee in only 13 seconds. <laughs> Another win later, he received an opportunity to compete in the Ultimate Fighter Latin America. Rodriguez won tough Latin America by scoring a decision victory against Leandro Morales and earned his ticket to the UFC. In his promotional debut at UFC 188, Rodriguez faced a tough task in Charles Rosa, whose poise and experience gave the young Mexican a glimpse at what it was like competing against the best fighters in the world. To Rodriguez's advantage, the fight took place in his home country of Mexico, which provided him with the inspiration he needed to make a successful start to his UFC career. El Pantera, or the Panther, started off with a bang landing his trademark flashy kicks and leg attacks and forcing Rosa to wrestle. But even when the fight hit the mat, Rodriguez showed his grappling prowess by locking in a triangle choke that had the alarm bells ringing for Rosa. Here. Rodriguez has got some ups. He is wild. In the second round, the high altitude started to come into play, and the American's output was limited to takedowns only. But even those weren't strong enough to take Rodriguez down. Final seconds and of the round. And he gets reversed. Look at this kid. My God. Big elbows by Rodriguez. Rosa had a much better third round as he managed to get the better of the grappling exchanges. He took Rodriguez down and busted the Mexican open with significant ground and pound until the final buzzer. Rodriguez was declared the winner by a split decision. The competition got tougher for Rodriguez in his second fight at UFC 192, where he fought perennial contender Dan the Hangman Hooker. The fight between the two high-octane fighters had fans hooked from start to finish. Rodriguez was the aggressor throughout as he landed his unorthodox kicks to devastating effect, with a spinning elbow in the second round that caught Hooker napping. Criticize those techniques, say that they're high risk. Being the second best in striking exchanges on the night, the New Zealander tried to rely heavily on wrestling, but he couldn't find much success with it either. Ultimately, Rodriguez secured a far more dominant victory than his UFC debut and improved to 2-0 in the promotion. In his third promotional fight at UFC 197, Rodriguez produced his best performance to date against Andre Philly, beating him in all areas. Rodriguez outgrappled and outstruck his opponent for the major portion of the first and second rounds, before putting him away with a highlight reel jumping switch kick that earned him an additional $50,000. Yair's just so f Oh, round kick, wow. he got him, it's it. Just right there. Rodriguez's win over Philly earned him an opportunity to headline a UFC fight night against Alex Casares in 2016, and he grabbed it with both hands. During the first two rounds of the fight, Rodriguez had the better of the striking exchanges since Carreras allowed him the space to maneuver, despite the fact that he was having a lot of success every time he closed the distance. If Rodriguez continues spinning like this, I'm going to be sick. <laughs> The third round was all Casares. He closed the distance and managed to land a quick one-two, followed by a knee to the body before taking Yair's back and unleashing a brutal grounded pound. Oh, that's a lot of energy he expended at the beginning of this round, but he wasn't breathing, Rebbe, on the right heavy. 
The championship rounds, however, echoed the first two. Caceres allowed Rodriguez the space he needed to execute his kicks and spinning attacks. The last minute of the fight was especially exciting as both fighters threw the kitchen sink at one another. Put that off him, but unable to land on his own, and Rodriguez looking to put the finishing touches on what has been a good fifth round for him. Rodriguez still managed to land more and secured a hard-fought split decision victory, which took him an inch closer to a title shot. In his next fight, Rodriguez faced an aging BJ Penn, who struggled to keep up with the speed and intensity of his much younger foe. The fight was kicks galore from start to finish, and Rodriguez attacked the former UFC two-division champion with every kick that he had in his arsenal. Kick coming. After a dominant first round, Rodriguez dropped Penn immediately in the second with a front kick right hand combination, followed by a furious finishing flurry to put the Hall of Famer away. As round two here, down goes Penn! Rodriguez going in for the finish! Having embarrassed BJ Penn, Rodriguez was tipped to leave another legend, Frankie Edgar, in his rearview mirror at UFC 211, but he was completely shut down. Edgar dominated and humbled Rodriguez with his wrestling, taking him down and punishing him with a vicious grounded pound that caused a horrible swelling under the Mexican's left eye. He is getting beat up right now by Frankie Edgar. He's top control in the game and stays as busy as anyone loads up on that strike. At the end of the second round, a cage side doctor examined Rodriguez, whose eye sat colored different shades of purple and yellow. Moments later, the fight was over. Luckily, Rodriguez would get a chance to redeem himself by replacing Edgar on short notice for a fight against the Korean zombie Chan Sung Young and producing a fight of the year and knockout of the year contender that raised his stock to another level. The fight was a bloody war from start to finish. The Korean zombie lived up to his moniker and kept coming forward despite repeatedly getting punched and kicked by his opponent and responded with better strikes each time. Rodriguez had a great first round, but the Korean zombie won the next three due to his volume and power. The high octane and non-stop action continued into the fifth round, and it appeared as if the Mexican was on his way to a second consecutive loss. With 10 seconds remaining in the fight, Rodriguez and the Korean Zombie traded with reckless abandon. And just one second before the end of the fight, Rodriguez ducked under his opponent's punches and landed a reverse elbow from an angle that defied the laws of physics and knocked the Korean out cold. Oh, nice body kick. One more flurry. Oh, wow. The victory earned him a big fight in Mexico City against Jeremy Stevens, but it was ruled a no contest just 15 seconds into the bout due to an accidental eye poke. The rematch took place a month later, and the two made up for disappointing fans in their first fight. The Mexican edged the first round because of a higher output as his opponent swung for the fences. In the second round, Yair hurt Stevens with a body kick before sweeping him to the ground and almost finishing the job. Which one he's thrown, and that's what makes Yair oh! Stevens would eventually make a strong comeback in the third, taking Rodriguez down and raining vicious ground and pound on him. Oh, big land with the left hand by Stevens. Oh, man, you can't but it was a little too late, and Rodriguez was awarded the victory by unanimous decision. A win over Stevens earned Rodriguez a title eliminator against Max Holloway in 2021. MMA fans were looking forward to pure violence, and the two featherweight phenoms didn't disappoint. The fight started with Holloway stalking Rodriguez and landing shots here and there to measure distance. A couple of times now. Oh, nice. And once he managed to do that, he pressed his opponent and started landing more. Hey, that hurt, Max. Oh. Rodriguez backed off and relied on counters while mixing his strikes up. Knocked out. The violent exchanges continued in the second round, where Rodriguez let his kicks fly to shift the momentum. Oh. Yair is coming out hot, first round, second round, big volume. But he still found trouble dealing with the former champion's pressure and volume. Patience. Oh. Rodriguez was having his moments, but it was Holloway's boxing that was doing more damage, and despite an extremely entertaining fight, the Mexican was the second best on the night and lost by unanimous decision. Since his loss to Holloway, Rodriguez has won two in a row. In both fights, Yair surprised his opponents with his slick submission game off his back. Against Brian Ortega by first round TKO, Rodriguez locked in a tight armbar when he was taken down, which resulted in Ortega's shoulder being dislocated. Even though Yair's throwing up his legs, this is Got great for Brian. Yeah, this is great for Brian. Brian wants to grab. Oh, what shit. happened? His shoulder popped out. Oh, his shoulder popped out. Oh, no and against Josh Emmett by submission in the second round, he pulled off a beautiful triangle choke to win his first UFC title. Oh, 
which he will unify against champion Alex Volkanovski at UFC 290. Although the Aussie seems invincible at the moment, Rodriguez is a very tricky fight for him, especially with a fast improving skill set. Yair Rodriguez has had his ups and downs throughout his career, but UFC 290 is his opportunity to join the likes of Brandon Moreno and Alexa Grasso to make his country proud. Will Yair Rodriguez do the unthinkable and beat Alex Volkanovski at UFC 290? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you liked our video, please show us some love by subscribing and turning on your notifications so we keep bringing you stories on UFC fighters like Yair Rodriguez. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.